There has been a lot of talk about the changing role of the catechist. Catechist is now an official ministry, but what does that really mean for us? Does the church want us to think about catechesis differently? We'll talk about those questions and offer three insights that will forever change the way you think about catechesis today on Catechist Stream. Well, good evening. My name is Steve Botsford, Senior Director of Digital Catechesis with William H. Sadlier. I'm Deacon Matt Hallback, Executive Director of Catechesis with Sadlier. And we would like to welcome you to Catechist Stream, where we recognize and support catechists and their baptismal call to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We want to help you swim upstream. And if you're not sure what swimming upstream is, then you can go back and check out the pilot episode that we did a few weeks ago. It's pinned to the Facebook group that you're viewing the stream in now. So go back and review that so that you can understand what we're talking about when we're talking about swimming upstream. Hey, we're glad you're here. I'm here in Des Moines, Iowa. Steve, where are you at? I am in the Atlanta area. We call it Hot Atlanta. <laughs> in the winter, I don't know if it's Hot Atlanta. But uh, it's cold. It's warmer than Iowa. Anyway, let us know where you're viewing from. Put it in the chat box. And if you're new, just type new in the chat box so we can say hi. Yeah, we'd like to say hello to you. And, um, and we want to start off by thanking all of those who did attend the pilot episode. Uh, we really appreciated the engagement, interaction, and feedback. And we took the feedback from you to determine that Monday night is actually... The best night for most people, not everyone. I've heard some feedback that Tuesday or Wednesday would be better, but and we apologize that there is no perfect time. But never fear, because if you miss Catechist Stream, these are being recorded and they are posted in our Facebook group. We'll soon be adding the recordings into our YouTube channel as well as catechiststream.com. So for now, though, you can go back into the Facebook group and and view the stream if you missed it. All right, Steve, give me a little drum roll here. Give me a little <laughs> drum roll. <laughs> That's my now, drum. Now, as a surprise for everyone attending our show tonight, our first live stream of the year, we're going to give out a $20 Amazon gift card. But you have to stay to the end in order to claim it. How to get the gift card is the big question, and here's the easy answer. We're going to look at who has the most comments in the chat box. So. If you told us where you're from, that's one comment. If you said you were new also, that's two. Uh, so please, engage with us. That's the joy of live stream. And we'll tally those comments and then dole out that gift card at the end of the show. Right. Thanks, Deacon Matt. That's so generous. <laughs> we want to show our appreciation. What's that? I love being generous. He loves me. Yeah, I, I know you do. I do too. <laughs> and that's why we said we want to share more gift cards. So, um, so don't forget, it's based on your comments. So let us know, put those comments in. Let me see. I see, I'm already seeing some comments. We're going to jump to those in just a second, but we do want to mention something very special that we're excited about today officially kicks off our weekly live stream. Yay. Celebrate Woo! with us. <laughs> we're excited to be launching the stream, especially because we want to help you swim upstream. You like the fish? I do like the fish. Yeah. And speaking of water, speaking of water, baptism and the baptismal catechumenate play a huge part in answering the questions that we asked, that I asked at the top of the show. And we'll talk more about those in just a minute. But first, let's introduce today's topic, three insights that will forever change the way you think about catechesis. Now, if you have questions as you go along, because we're going to cover some pretty serious territory tonight. So if you have questions, uh, put those in the comment box and just drop a cue in before your question so we can more quickly see the questions that are coming in versus the comments. So uh, just put a cue in front of that if you will. And uh, where are we, Deacon Matt? Oh, tell us a little more about uh, the role of catechists and how it's changing. Yeah, sure. So you kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier, but 
the church is really sort of reclaiming the idea, the truth, that our baptism is the source of our call to catechesis. In other words, by virtue of being baptized, we are all called to be catechists. And the trick is to discover how we're called to be catechists. And we're going to talk a lot about that way of being catechists for the rest of our show. And, and I'm excited about that. And the topic of baptism um, just really struck a chord with me because I'm a convert to the Catholic Church. And when I came into the church through the RCIA uh, last century, um, you know, <laughs> we, we would often get quizzed uh, on some of the information that, that we were being taught. And there's, you know, this is an intellectual faith, and, and we couldn't always remember all the details, but we learned quickly just to answer the question with the word baptism, because it has something to do with our faith, you know, and it, it all goes back somehow to baptism. So me, we'll learn more about that tonight. Let me jump in there. That reminds me, Steve. Uh, I'm not a convert, but I was in a religious education, and we had our own way of gaming the system, which was if we didn't know an answer to a quiz, we would put either love or Jesus, and we're right most of the time. So. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so baptism, love, and Jesus, you cannot go wrong, right? It's wonderful. Trifecta. <laughs> well, we're going to move into our chats now and see what we come up with. Um, let's go into our chat box and... Uh, these are not going to show until you type them. They're not going to show the ones that are previously. So let me just show a couple of these. We've got uh, viewers from New Jersey. We've got, uh, there we go, Love Jesus. There you go. Uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, we've got, where else? Independence, Ohio, Central Florida. Uh, someone says, I'm new. So, um, hey, I hello. I do want to let you know that, uh, let me see if I can find this for you. If you'd like for your name to show, uh, maybe you want your name to show on your post so that we can call you by name. Um, there is a link that you can click, and I thought that I had it ready for you. Yeah, here we go right here. So um, you would just need to go to chat.restream.io slash FB for Facebook. And you can actually just connect the two accounts. So you have to give your permission for your name to show. Uh, otherwise, you'll be a Facebook user. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you'd like your name to show, just go to that link and you can do that. And uh, we'll try to put that in the chat box for you so that you can click the link and go do that if you're interested. But let's go back to our chats now. And um, <clears throat> someone said here, I'd like an Amazon gift card. So Ooh. I'm so glad. What do you think about that, Deacon Matt? Oh, who wouldn't want one? I mean, we just had Christmas. I already spent mine, so I need another one. <laughs> yeah, what, right, right. We need another one. So we're giving you that opportunity tonight. Somebody says, yay, we want that. And we've got a lot of celebrating going on about us kicking off the weekly live stream. So someone else is saying, um, a Facebook user... I love the fish. Let's make it the Catechist Stream official dance. Oh, the fish, right? Oh, oh I'm, nice. I'm kind of, yeah, let me get some music going here. I'm not sure. Is that, is that this? <laughs> I don't, what fish? Wait a minute. How do you do that? Like that? I don't know. Gil? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I got no idea. I don't either. Uh, so someone says, I'm going to go and watch that pilot show uh, tomorrow. So that's, that's good. Go back and see that. It's there waiting for you. And someone else says, baptism is always not the wrong answer. So, yes, <laughs> that almost blew my mind, but I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Someone else loved Jesus, and we got a lot of laughing going on. I love that. Uh, I see someone said, my name is Annie. So, hi, Annie. So hi, glad Annie. that you're here. Uh, you all have some great catechetical dance skills. So, you know, we're going to be revealing a lot of secrets that we have. Yes. Debbie says that yeah. we're hilarious. What do you think, Deacon Matt? I think we're pretty funny, but uh, you know. Uh, but by the way, I'm just going to allude to a little bit of content later on. If you happen to have, uh, be thinking about what kind of Bible you have in your house. Not not talking about the translation, but is it a small Bible, medium-sized Bible, or a large Bible? Just be thinking about that. We'll get back to that later. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Um... That's planting a good seed because we're going to, well, we've got another secret for you. So I'm just going to leave it at that. <clears throat> now, somebody, secrets and gift cards. 
This is yeah. great. Gift cards, gift cards. And we love these chants coming in. Somebody said, what was that address again? So I'm going to put this back up on the screen for you. So it's uh, chat.restream.io slash FB, which is for it's Facebook. The purple banner. It's in the purple banner at the bottom of that screen. Yeah, right there. We'll get an arrow there next time. Oh, that way. Next time. Yeah. Everything's backwards. It's backwards. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for uh, for all those comments and for sharing with us. We really do appreciate that. It makes it much more fun to engage with you and and to um, to bring this great production to you. Uh, I think I mentioned last time we put a lot of work into this, and but it, it's not about us. It's about you and and you joining us and sharing with us. So we really do appreciate that. Well, before we move into our topics real quick, let's just give a shout out, shout out, uh, a commemoration. We just celebrated the baptism of the Lord, and that is the feast day that grounds this entire production. So we're going to be talking a lot about catechesis as it rooted in our baptism. So we thought what a great time to kick off the first episode of Catechist Dream right after the baptism of the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of thought went into that. And, um, well, I think that's a perfect segue for what we will be talking about tonight. So why don't we take a look? Three things we'll talk about today on Catechist Stream. Catechesis is modeled on the baptismal catechumenate. Catechesis is rooted in the baptismal vocation. And catechesis is not limited to the classroom. Okay, that's today on Catechist Stream. So let's get started with our first talk at topic, Deacon Matt. Catechesis is modeled on the baptismal catechumenate. So I can barely say that. Um, I'm racking my brain, and I my answer for that is going to be baptism. But why don't right. you just, yeah, right? Am, am I right? You are, or you could have said Jesus or love. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So uh, would you just give us a mini refresher course on what is the baptismal catechumenate before we get into explaining it? Absolutely. Well, I've been a director of RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, for a long time. I think we're going on <clears throat> maybe 12 years or so in different parishes and different dioceses. It's one of my favorite ministries. And one of the reasons I enjoy it so much is because it, the church's wisdom about the right, it really just gathers people together. It puts us in typically small groups, although I've had groups as large as 30 people. Uh, but even that group, then we break down into smaller groups. But it's the idea of growing a community, uh, surrounding that community with prayer, cultivating a prayerful spirit. So we're talking fellowship, or we're talking prayer together. Uh, quality time together. If you're if you're thinking in terms of love languages, that's a that's the language that would describe the catechumenate. And what's the purpose of it? To prepare this group to become disciples, and not individuals, but disciples together in the larger community of believers. Now, there's some things we have to do to get ready, and the church knows this. So the church gives us these little stages, and it's these stages that I really want us to keep in mind when we catechize. Because a lot of times when we catechize, we do it in these confined, sometimes pressure-filled sessions, formal sessions, typically in a classroom, but ever since COVID and, and maybe a little bit preceding it, some more hybrid opportunities or even fully remote, uh, so catechesis online, but they tend to happen in these little periods. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more later about breaking open that idea that it's not just we can find catechesis to one time, but it's something that we look for opportunities to do always. But that aside, uh, we want to uh, move together as a community, be formed together through these stages. So what's the first stage of the catechumenate? Well, it's called the pre-catechumenate or the inquiry phase. Now, what's the point of the inquiry phase? To help people feel comfortable about being in this new group, to help people feel like they can ask questions, so we want to make it a safe space, and it's a place to begin to exchange stories about who we are. So we're trying to find out about the people that we're on this journey of faith with. Now imagine taking those three things uh, and applying them to your particular experience of catechesis, which might be 45 minute session or up to an hour and a half. It takes place one night a week or one day. Maybe it's on the Sunday after the mass. 
But imagine if you put some emphasis on really getting to know the children or the, the teenagers or the adults that are in front of you, really understanding their bios, taking time to get that story. And why are those in stories? Why are those stories important? Because it tells us who's in front of us. It tells us a little bit about who, what they value, what their concerns are, what their what information they might have about the church or the faith or what misinformation they might have. Um, the challenges they might be facing in their lives. And I've seen churches, parishes do this so differently, soliciting this kind of information. Uh, and I'm talking from within catechetical programs as well as the RCIA. One way to do it is to just create a formal kind of a bio that you have uh, either, again, the group, regardless of age, try to fill out to the best of the ability. Uh, a lot of times with really young kids, it's parents who are giving us that information. Uh, but some sort of level set to let you know who the person or the group is that's in front of you. Why that's so important is because you, you begin to start to think about the faith as a catechist, not just as a doctrine that needs to be shared, information that needs to be shared, but about things that can be very fruitful, truths that can be very fruitful for people if they're applied to their lives. Uh, another stage you want to think about is the catechumen in itself, because in the catechumen it, we have these beautiful liturgical milestones, right? Like the handing over the, of the creed, the Our Father. Uh, we also have uh, the right of acceptance, the right of election. So think about, in your experience of catechesis, how you might incorporate the liturgy. This could be we do some prayer uh, actually in the church together with our group, or we have adoration together, or we do some kind of paraliturgical thing, perhaps in our classroom or wherever we're doing catechesis. Uh, sacramentals can certainly be very helpful with this, but the reason we should we all know the re the reason the liturgy is so key for helping us to catechize is because it brings all that we say and do to kind of a focus to a culmination because the whole purpose of our discipleship uh, we find there in the celebration of liturgy and particularly in the Eucharist. And finally, what I want us to think about in terms of the catechumenate and catechizing is the idea of mystagogy. So we've received our, our sacraments, and now what do we do? We just send them on their way and hope they stay in church? No, we want to continue to engage with our group, and we really want to have conversations around their journey of faith now, and especially from the point of view of of sacraments and their experience of the sacraments. Do they, do they find the sacraments having any real bearing on their life? And that brings us back to the initial comment. Keeping a catechumenal vision as we do catechesis helps us keep the focus on how the faith really impacts our lives. So that's our first segment. When we want to swim upstream and we want to catechize effectively, we want to be thinking about the catechumenal model and look to it for our inspiration. Annie is killing it with the comments. So Annie <laughs> wants that gift card. So thank you, Annie. That's go, really... Go, Annie. Go, go. All right. Uh, but, but Tristan has joined us. Also, Veronica is watching. So thank you all for joining us on Catechus Stream. Yes. Tonight, we're talking about... Of uh, three things that will, three insights that will forever change the way you think about catechesis. And the first one was that baptism is modeled on the baptismal catechumenate. So, do you have any questions for us? I'm not seeing any questions coming in. I, you must have done a very thorough explanation of, oh, of how that'd catechesis. Be the first time ever. Yeah. That'd be the first time ever. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, uh, but I'm not seeing any new comments. So, uh, let's see. So this will be every Monday at 730. So yes, it will be. Uh, Annie, it will be every Monday at 730. So that's our goal. And we hope that yeah. you come back and join us. Uh, let's see. Who says this? I'll have to rewatch Annie because I spent most of the time trying to get my name to show. So, well, thank you for trying that. Uh, maybe in between today and next uh, Monday, you can, you can work that out. We'll put that that web address up again for you. Well, thanks for the interaction. Let's move on then to the second topic. So Deacon Matt, uh, we're talking about catechesis now that is rooted in baptism. And so it's moving from volunteer to vocation. So um, what would you like to share with us about that? Yeah, so a lot of what I have to say is just echoing the Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, he's done a lot in his pontificate to really focus on the need to 
catechize more from the gospel and part of that or charismatic uh, that's a big word there a greek word but a gospel centered or gospel message catechesis but part of being able to catechize this way is understanding our own identity as a catechist so here's where we get into the connection with the baptism of the lord the feast we just celebrated which is also the feast that kind of underpins this entire show and really the purpose behind it We're, we really want to convince everyone out there in cyberspace who are catholics that by the virtue of being baptized they are called you are called to be a catechist now there are different tiers if you will or different kinds of catechists you know there's those that have had a lot of training and education and specialization and we have different labels for those catechists you know specialists or master catechists but for the 99 percent of us we're just generous people in the pews that are like, oh, we've heard the call several times that we need a catechist, so I will raise my hand uh, and give it a shot. So first of all, thank you everyone out there who's ever tried being a catechist. Uh, it is not an easy task. Um, that's where we get that idea of swimming upstream. It's not easy. Uh, and we need all the help we can get, hence shows like Catechist Stream. Uh, but Francis really focused on the catechist's identity. And the new directory, even for catechesis, zeroes in on this too. And both Francis and the new directory want to want to convince us that to be a good catechist, which we're called to be by virtue of our baptism, we're going to talk a little bit more about catechizing in a casual way for our last topic. Uh, again, we're not all called to be formal catechists in the classroom or in classes, so to speak, but to focus on your own relationship with Christ and to 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 use that relationship in your ministry of catechesis. So, in other words, to understand that to be a catechist is really about being as much as it is doing something like lesson planning, talking with parents, or trying to get a hold of parents because they're so elusive, or whatever the situation is, all those doing things that we do as catechists. There's also so much more being type of things that we need to be. And so, for example, Francis encourages us, and the New Directory for Catechesis encourages catechists to really get into the Word of God, particularly into the Gospels. Uh, why? Because that's the good news, and that should be the centerpiece, not only of everything that we say as catechists, but also how we conduct ourselves uh, as disciples. In other words, the witness that we give. And we, we give verbal witness a lot in catechism a lot about Jesus, we talk a lot about the church, a lot about the faith and the sacraments and moral life and prayer, but what really authenticates all of that, what really sort of persuades people that what is being said is true and meaningful are the anecdotes, the personal stories that you can back this up with. Uh, in other words, being able to articulate how uh, believing in, in what the church teaches has affected your life positively and has, has brought about transformation. How uh, the accounts of Jesus or the teachings of Jesus, like the Beatitudes, how those have impacted you personally and changed your life for the better and has, has deepened your commitment and love for Jesus Christ. These things we're only going to be able to articulate if we begin to take stock of them, right, in our own lives. So this is part of that our identity as catechists. This is the vocational aspect. And again, it's part doing what I'd actually do to catechize, but it's also just as much a part about being, taking stock of my own faith journey and doing so by reflecting on the Word of God, doing so through prayer, of course, by ongoing learning as much as I can get my hands on, uh, books, classes, catechist stream, resources from Sadlier, it's all these things. And, but what's going what's gonna to bring it all to bear, to bear fruit, is how well you can articulate how all that you've learned and your prayer and the worship that you've experienced, how that's impacted your life for the better, how yeah. it's changed you. Do and when we begin to think about our own life, our own faith journey, our life as catechist, our vocation, it really does change the whole game. It really does make your words far more impactful. And the activities and the things that you do to engage students, it makes it far more impactful. So we're, Deacon we're Matt, moving in a, Yeah. 
Deacon Matt, I just wanted to share that Shira just posted a comment that she said, I think it's so important as a catechist to be authentic and share your own faith moments. I teach yeah, second you. through eighth grades. And to be an authentic witness is what the children and, and adults are really looking for. We see enough hypocrisy and say one thing and do yeah. something else. But to yeah. be that authentic witness of Christ that you're talking about that comes from who we are in our faith life is so very important. And I got one last, thank you so much for that, Shira. That's a, that's a perfect comment. Uh, and I just want one little thing to put a little pin in this. Um, and that is just, uh, it's, we are on 24 seven, and this is a nice segue into the next topic. As disciples, we're on 24 seven. When you think about catechesis, right now, as you understand it, in, in the time that you do catechesis, in the space that you do it, whether it's in class or online, um, I want you to realize and believe that these little changes that you start to make, like really paying attention to your own faith journey and utilizing that journey in your catechesis, these little things, these little dividends, they'll start paying little dividends, if you will, spiritual dividends uh, with your students, with those you catechize. And it'll be a slow kind of accumulation of, of the fruit that's being born. So God can do anything, right? Anything's possible with God. So you start making some of these little changes and huge effects uh, you can see right away. But for most people, it's the long game. And it's these little changes with little effects that begin to accumulate. Just trust in, in Christ guiding you and in that understanding of catechist as a vocation leading how you catechize. I love the way that you put that. And I love the term dividends, you know, because, uh, well, our society is so money driven to make a connection like that. But speaking of money, um, if you didn't. If you weren't around for the beginning of the show, we are offering a gift card, an Amazon gift card, uh, for, the, for the person that comments the most tonight. So if you're just joining us, be sure to continue to comment. We're already seeing uh, some comments coming in from folks who have just dropped into the stream. So thank you for being here. Uh, we are offering a gift card uh, for you based on comments. One gift card. So just wanted to uh, share that. So thank you for, um, for your interactions. And by the way, if you're finding value in tonight's stream, be sure to hit the like button or the love button. We heard love is uh, always a good answer. So it's the little heart or the thumbs up. And uh, that actually helps our stream to reach more people. So uh, Share the love with us if you're finding value in the stream tonight. And if you haven't already, be sure to click the notification bell. Now, you had to become a member of this group to view the stream tonight. And, um, and so you're already part of this group. But be sure to click the notification bell. And then if it gives you the option, select all. Uh, that way you'll receive notifications when we go live. You'll receive, it makes it easier to access the stream. You'll also receive notifications when we make new posts in this group, the Advance Your Expertise and Catechesis group. So just wanted to mention that before we uh, move on. Uh, someone is saying a lot of value. Thank you. That's, um, let's see, who did say that? Shira said that. So thank you so much for sharing. Um I can see that uh, Lynn McDaniel is also watching tonight. So thank you, Lynn, for joining us. Feel free to use the comment box there as well. So let's move to our third topic tonight, Deacon Matt. The catechesis, catechesis is not limited to the classroom. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, yeah what? You say, what? <laughs> so let me start by saying, I didn't say this, but the new directory for catechesis said this, and it gave us this beautiful term called casual catechesis. Never heard anything like this before. Um, casual catechesis. Before we break open this term, I do want to invite you once again, you're going to figure out real quickly if you're part of the uh, catechist stream crew, we really make our audience work because we believe in active engagement and active learning and the benefits of that so if you were hoping to just sit on a stream and passively watch no no get on with us get get going with us so here's my invite okay if you've got a story because this this dovetails with what i'm about to say if you've got a story about how you've shared the good news with someone um and it could be a story of like success 
Here's a story about how I shared the gospel with somebody or my faith with somebody. Type it in the chat box. Give us, give us the talking points about it. Or it could be a story of awkwardness. Here's how I tried to share the good news with somebody and this is the disaster that ensued or whatever it was. And of course, it's never a complete disaster when we're trying to share the good news. There's always those seeds that the great sower of seeds scatters everywhere, even on those rocky places where it might not grow. But to quote Dumb and Dumber, you're, so you're saying there's still a chance. Yeah, there's still a chance. So even if it was awkward and seemed like a disaster, some good can come out of that as well. But it, think about the times you've tried to share faith. Uh, go ahead and put that in the chat box. Just give us the talking points, and we'd love to look at that and maybe read one of those uh, for everybody else. So that's my call to action for this segment. But getting back to uh, casual catechesis, the new directory, again, really doubling down on the vocational aspect of catechesis, that by virtue of being baptized, we're baptized priest, prophet, and king. And that prophetic piece is a catechetical piece. The prophets, as much as they might foretell things that could happen in Israel's future if they do this or don't do that, like if they keep God's commands or they don't, there's a lot more of reminding Israel of what who they are and whose they are and why they should be living according to God's law. So really they're echoing the law of God and echoing the covenants God's made with his people. And that word echo, which is where we get the term catechesis, kata ek, katakeo, uh, this idea of sounding down or echoing. Um, so with casual catechesis, the idea is Catechesis isn't confined to a classroom. It's not confined to a hybrid or a remote session. In other words, there's more than just these formal moments of catechesis that tend to take place within a church or a parish. Catechesis is something that is carried within the heart, and it's in the heart of every baptized person, according to the church. And we're just trying to pull out of that uh, the, the acknowledgement and the understanding, the awakening to the fact that the baptized are, in fact, called to catechize. So that means we're called to kind of grow where we're planted, or in this case, catechize where we're planted. That means in our homes, that means in our workspaces, that means in our social circles, online or in person. Um, we're called to be echoing uh, our love for Christ and Christ's love for us and others. And we do that in different ways, right? We don't walk around with a catechism and, and uh, try to on the street corner, you know, or better yet, and here is where we realize what I said earlier about what kind of Bible do you have? Think about the Bible thumpers, quote unquote, that you've seen or heard about. I know when I was going to school in Iowa City, at college there at the University of Iowa, and on this one corner, we always had a preacher out there who was there late at night, particularly on the weekends, because uh, the college kids would be coming out of the bars and, and trying to get back to their dorms. You know, some had a harder time than others trying to get back. And there'd be this one guy always there, literally hitting his Bible with his hand. So my question to you is, what size Bible do you have? And here's a better question too. Hitting somebody with the Bible or Bible thumping, does it ever work anyway? No, it doesn't. Uh, and by the way, I've got one heck of a Bible here. I've got a Jerusalem Bible. I also have about six other uh, editions, translations. Uh, I have NAB, NABRE, you name it. Uh, but this one's pretty big. So to Bible thump with this, I don't think it's going to knock any sense into people. It's probably going to like keep them away. So we got to get over this idea of proselytizing, uh, really forcing the faith. That's not at all the MO when it comes to casual catechesis. It has more to do with how do you relate to people and what sorts of gifts do you think God has given you? If you're, if you're a social person, use that gift of being social to share your faith. And you can do that in different ways. You can talk about your faith, uh, tell stories, if you will. But also, there's so much we do without verbalizing. And we call that, or actually St. Pope Paul VI called this, silent proclamation. And that's just as important as any verbal proclamation that we give uh, about the kingdom of God. And that silent proclamation better be characterized by love. So if you put love down as an answer, once again, you're probably right. Uh, but that we should give a silent witness for as much as we talk about the faith. 
Hey, Deacon uh, Matt, I just wanted to share that I have a smaller Bible. Well, let's see it. Oh, yeah. So I have a smaller Bible. So is that a, you know, one of the That's things. not going to do any thumping on anybody. That's not going to affect them. Now, I, I do want to mention, though, that uh, I was looking on my shelf for um, <laughs> for a smaller Bible. And this is the one that I found. And I realized when I opened it up that this is the one that my mother gave to me. So I want to give a shout out. I think my mom's watching. Oh. So um, this is the Bible that she gave me on uh in 1971 so i've had this bible for 50 years isn't that amazing that's amazing that's but amazing. it made me think you know we're talking about the size of the bible i'm getting a lot of love right there so i see that um, <laughs> um it made me think you know when we when we are sharing our faith with others um, we can go full dose, like you're talking about, thumping them over the head with it, or we can go a little softer. Sometimes it may depend on um, who you're talking to. If it's a family member and you really, really want to reach them and you see them frequently, you probably will lose traction if you're hitting them with the big Bible, right? So we want to be a little more sensitive. I mean, what would your response be to that? How, how do we know how much is too much? Well, it's hard to really gauge. I mean, you can gauge that by like facial and other social cues if, if people are getting turned off by the message. Um, so certainly reading a room is a helpful skill to have uh, when evangelizing, catechizing. Um, but I also think that uh, we want to talk about the role of prayer in all of this, right? And and sometimes the, we pray in the midst of doing something. And, and when you're when you need a short prayer, something like in an instant, like instant coffee, something that jazz things up really quick. My favorite prayer is from St. Therese of Lisieux, who just says the name Jesus. And she, she would call on Jesus' name all throughout her day, all during her, her routine and her chores and her duties around the convent. Um, and I think we need to have that kind of going in the back of our minds and in our spirit spirit as we're evangelizing catechizing i think that'll because only god will help you in ways that that i could never in the moment uh you'll, you'll it'll be a gut feeling it'll be a, an urging and let me give you a quick example i'm glad you brought this up i'll make this really quick um this is a, a great example i think of silent proclamation okay really no words were spoken during this at all but i recall a time that i was rolling into church this was before as a deacon sneaking in the back pew it's a 430 mass it's 435 i'm just trying to be inconspicuous you know not seen and i this person in front of me i noticed right away in the pew in front of me she's upset and she's crying and she's trying to hide the fact that she's crying all through the mass and there are people to her right, to her left, in front of her. Nobody's looking at her. Nobody's engaging with her. Now, of course, we have like the handshake of peace or the kiss of peace. There's an acknowledgement this lady exists. But other than that, no one's noticing or trying not to notice that this woman's having a hard time. So we finish communion, come back to our pews. And I, in my gut, this is one of those in the moment experiences. I just said, Jesus, Jesus, help me. What, what should I do anything about this? And I, it was almost like an out-of-body experience, if you will, but I just, my arm kind of moves on its own, and I put my hand on her shoulder, and instead of, you know, being surprised and jumping out of the pew or jerking her shoulder away, she just grabs my hand and kind of white knuckles it like this, like she hangs on. And then after the Mass, she turns around and just mouths the words, thank you, thank you. That's silent proclamation. And all of us have had these kinds of experiences. And it doesn't take a lot of training, and it doesn't take a lot of specialization. It just takes a vigilant uh, awareness, being on the lookout for these opportunities to share the good news. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Deacon Matt. And we have a lot of comments that have come in uh, during your last point. So I wanted to share some of those with you. Uh, Veronica is with us, and she says that prayer is the key for me. Uh, so amen. And Annie said the same thing, prayer always, right? So um, just leaning on the Lord to know. And I, I like to call uh, impromptu meetings or even if there's an important meeting that needs to happen, uh, a divine appointment, I, 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 tr I turn to God to let me know when is the right time, uh, you know, or what to do. So I really appreciate that. Uh, most people just want acknowledgement, uh, uh, Annie says. So totally agree with that. Uh, so important. Now, going back to some of the, sh the stories that um, you had requested, 
I, if I may, I'd just like to share a couple of the, yeah. the comments that we saw. Uh, one day I was late to teach sacramental prep. There was an elderly lady in the parking lot at the store uh, who was lost. I'm busy. I'm late. I tried to ignore her, got in the car to head to communion class, and then God said, wait. So I turned back. Uh, I, I just think that's a beautiful, beautiful story to, uh, to share that, um, you know, that we're, we are leaning on the Lord and we are listening um, and, and we can turn to God to know what to do. Um, so I'm not sure if there's a part two or if we need a part two for that. Uh, someone else says that I spent uh, four months talking to my second graders about confession, four months right before Christmas break. And then I asked them to tell me one thing they learned, crickets. Um, what do you say to that? Sometimes we, we do step out. Uh, we're doing our role as a catechist, but maybe based on the response, we may feel like we're not getting anywhere. What would you say to that, Deacon Matt? I think sometimes when we, when we put all our eggs in the, in the one uh, question and answer basket, we can be disappointed. Like if I totally understand where you're coming from, who, whoever gave us that comment. That was Annie. Uh, it's happened to me many times, Annie. Uh, and the first instinct is to think I failed. Uh, I didn't get through to them. Uh, but don't allow the evil one to jump in there and go to town on you. Don't, don't allow him to work on your mind like that. Uh, because all he's going to do is sow the seeds of, of really kind of uh, depressive thoughts and, and doubt and discouragement and all those one tools that he uses to really get, get us bogged down. What I look for is... Um, Try and it's it's a hard it, it takes even more commitment and I think this is this is the rub for a lot of catechists sometimes to get to see that little bit of fruit it does require that one more inch that we have to give that just one more, more little effort and so one of the things I would encourage you to do is to follow up with one of the one of your children now certainly you can't ask them if they've gone to confession or what sins they've confessed but uh, ask them if they remember the class ask if if they remember anything from that time that you talked about confession. Or if you have the chance to, to share, you know, in an appropriate way about uh, with one of those former students about what God has done in your life, how God has helped you, uh, for, how God has forgiven you and how that's felt, how wonderful that's been for you. What a, what a great opportunity to open up a dialogue then. That's such a great point. And I think also a strategy of maybe starting with yes or no questions just to get them to open their mouth and say a word. Uh -huh. um, you know, and then they might feel more comfortable answering, you know, but when you say, you know, what did you learn? I mean, that's, that's, that can be challenging for adults. So, so maybe, you know, do you remember when we talked about this, you know, yes, no. Right. And then, uh, sort of ease into that conversation. Uh, yeah. so Brian shared that, uh, he carries his traveling prayer bag, uh, and, and he has a bottle of mustard seeds. So I'd love to hear more about how you uh, use those, but I know that um, planting yeah. seeds is so important to us as Christians. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And I want to go back one more, real quick to Annie again and just share about my, my third oldest son. I've got six children. My third oldest son is Jojo, formerly Joseph. And uh, he, so he goes, to, they all go to Catholic school. Uh, Jojo just re really struggles to pay attention. And uh, this is... <laughs> This is really embarrassing for me because I got a phone call from the school one day. But during mass, uh, Jojo was literally chewing on the pew, which the the, edge, the end of the pew was like, it's got this long kind of piece that's like head high. He's just over there gnawing on it. Like, I don't know what he's thinking. But I get a phone call from the school about it and we had to take care of the situation. But here's the interesting part. So the priest gave the homily that day during the mass, as they do. And then when asked what the priest talked about after Mass, Jojo was the one who answered correctly. So he looked like he was doing, not paying attention and actually chewing on a pew, but the kid was learning. <laughs> That's a great story. And, and, and I think we can all think of uh, situations like that. The kids will surprise us, and we can't always tell what they're thinking by their body language, although sometimes that gives us a clue. Uh, and then there's one more comment that I'd like to share. Um, and, and this was Annie again. I see my students sometimes at the store, and they may be surprised to see you out of the classroom. Like, you just belong in there. That's the only place that I know that, that I've ever seen you. But you, you really, <laughs> yeah, right? You really are a catechist 24-7. They see 
uh, who you are outside the classroom. So really, really, really great insight. Well, I just love all these comments and the feedback. Hopefully you love it too. And, and you, you like this dynamism, this give and take. If you do keep coming back each week, same time, same date. I want to just recap real quick our topics for tonight. We talked a lot about the baptismal catechumen as the model or inspiration for catechesis today. We talked about our baptism is the, is the grounding for our, our call to catechize. And then we talked about casual catechesis, that catechesis isn't something that's just formal and happens in some place in a classroom. It's something that we always need to look for opportunities to share the good news. Amen. Amen to that. And don't go away just yet. We are getting closer and closer to revealing who won the gift card tonight. So hang around just a couple more minutes. Um, what do you want to hear more about? Uh, we'd like to hear from you, so put it in the chat box, the comments. Uh, let us know what you'd like to hear more about because we will take that into consideration. We're planning our topics for uh, the next several weeks. Um, so we can you can actually guide the conversation by sharing that with us. And also check out catechistream.com if you haven't done so already. I'm going to put the web address up here so that you can see it. Uh, we are building this website out. It's still brand new, uh, but we've already got some good information for you. So check out catechistream.com when you get a moment. And by the way, did you know that you can find more support, more catechist support on social media? So check this out. Where is it? Here it is. <laughs> That's right. So go to uh, Facebook if you're not already uh, have uh, uh, checked out Sadly or Religion on Facebook. You may also go to YouTube and just type in Sadly or Religion. You'll find our group. You'll want to uh, also like that group and follow the group. So you can, let's see if I have a blurb for that. I think so. Follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and click the bell and select all. That way you'll be notified when we post new information. So we've got a lot of video content, obviously on YouTube, that's curated in playlists. So check that out. And then in our Facebook groups, we have Sadly Religion, and then we have this private group, which is Advance Your Expertise for Catechesis. So don't miss out on the social media. And uh, let's see, what else? Don't forget to, I just said that, so I'm checking my notes. What else are we supposed to tell them, Deacon Matt? Well, we have a, uh, we're going to talk about our host, Sadler. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Catechistream Stream is hosted by Sadler. Oh, there you go. So if you didn't know, we want to thank Sadler for sponsoring and hosting Catechistream. Stream. Uh, Sadler is a family owned company and has been since 1832. Uh, providing catechetical resources uh, to parishes, Catholic parishes and schools all that time. So check out Sadlier if you haven't done so already. And um, I guess we are getting to the point where we want to close in prayer, and then we'll be letting you know who won the gift card tonight. So we do want to close in prayer, but because of the technical glitch earlier, I can't see the uh, the prayer screen that you're about to bring up. So would you mind leading the prayer? Not at all. So let's move into our Catechist Stream prayer. This is uh, a prayer that Deacon Matt wrote for us. And that, not just Matt and I, but you too. So we'll pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, Amen. being a catechist can sometimes feel like swimming upstream. At times, the ministry can be stressful, challenging, and even exhausting. But we know that you are here and that you will lead us upstream as you call us to continue to share the truth of your love and mercy with others. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Very well done. 
Uh, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity <laughs> to sit in for you on the Catechist oh, Stream yeah. Prayer. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's that time. So uh, a couple of closing announcements. First, though, we have some very special topics coming in the next few weeks. Um, we'll have a three-part series on the Synod, including a special guest to share how their diocese is preparing to implement and prepare for uh, supporting the direction that they've received from the Synod. So stay tuned for that. Next week, we'll be offering tips to help kick off your new year. So come back and join us then. Be sure to share the good news with others, uh, the good news of Jesus, of course, but about Catechist Stream, because we're here to support all catechists. So if you're um, you know, a catechist, share this with other catechists. If you're a parish or school religion director, share that as well. If you're a diocesan director, let people know that we're here and we are here to support you. We're grateful for you sharing that word. And um, I think that's it. So let's announce tonight's gift card winner. All right, I'll do a little drum roll here on the desk. And uh, I believe the count is in. Let me see. Yes, I've just got an official word <laughs> that the winner tonight is. Maybe I should go back to our oh, um, drum roll again. I'm going to go back to our confetti screen. Hey! It's. The winner is Annie. So Annie, thank you so much for engaging with us through the comments tonight. Um, I'm going to need your email address so that I can send you the Amazon gift card. So um, just hang on. I don't necessarily want you to put it in the chat box unless you're comfortable doing that. And we will get that to you. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and in sharing. So we're going to go back to our closing screen. Uh, thanks for joining Catechist Stream. Thank you for what you do to share the good news of Jesus. Never forget that you're called by God and that you are important. What you teach is eternal. It's everlasting. So you're just helping people along in their faith journey um, in the right place at the right time. So never feel inferior about what you're doing. You make a difference. So until the next time, Keep, Keep swimming, swimming upstream. upstream. There we go. All right. Take care and God bless you guys.